The riptide has come and gone, and now we're into the second wave of free agency, and you got what you wanted, Chief Kingdom. They have added a pass catcher to this roster. His name happens to be Juju Smith-Schuster. You've heard of him before. He is going to sign with the Chiefs a one-year 10.75 max, but that's what we got to talk about. Welcome to Lockdown Chiefs. We're brought to you every day here on YouTube. We're live right now. You'll hear this on audio afterwards. We're free on every single platform. Check us out. Check out our sponsors, Bet Online, as well as Built Bar. But right now, Chris, happy with this decision? What's the pluses and minuses for you? I am happy with this decision. I think this is a great signing, and I would argue this is tier three of free agency, but that's all I was really trying to say with the, the number three. So uh, I do think this is a good signing by Kansas City. Uh, it sounds like from what I have seen, and I put this out on Chiefs Corner, I uh, already put an article out on Juju on Chiefs Corner if you want to go check that out. Um, Do we have that address? It is Substack at Chiefs Corner. Just, I mean, you can Google Chiefs Corner on, stuff on Substack. You can find it. Uh, what I will say, though, looks like this is really like a $3 million salary, and the rest is incentives. Ooh. And the key to that, and here's my big thing, on my big takeaway with that, is if you look at what Juju did last year, he only played five games. So my guess is the 7.75 that they signed him for that's over the $3 million in salary is all going to be not, not likely to be earned, which means if Kansas City wants, they could say, okay, well, that whole $8 million, almost $8 million, is based on if you play six games. And then it doesn't count against the cap until 2023. Right. But here's, here's the key. He has to beat six games – he has to have more than 15 receptions, more than 129 yards, or more than zero touchdowns in order to hit incentives uh, that would be considered not likely to be earned because that's his stats for last year. Right. I'd, say, that, I'd say it's a lot. It's going to be very likely that he earns any incentives that they give him because I the threshold would have to be pretty low. Yeah. Or could but, be very low. It doesn't have to be. True, but this this leaves them an out. It keeps the, the base down. Yep. I love this kind of concept. This is what you get when you're coming off a year where Ben Roethlisberger was throwing to you, or not throwing to you is probably <laughs> the problem. Uh, so that makes a lot of sense. It fills a gap. Now, I, I still feel he's better in the slot. So this doesn't mm -hmm. rule out an X in the draft. Um, and, folks, the athletic matrix is out. If you want to know who the best X receiver is in the draft, it's all in the matrix. You can get it at rogueapc.com. Uh, and you can use the code locked on to get yourself a discount, by the way. Um, so that that draft part is coming. I, and they could even get another receiver in free agency. But I love the concept of being able to run four wide, spread it out with McColl and Juju. Or I would think that you could line Juju up outside if you want. He certainly can man the slot and make McColl a bit more of a role player, a bit more of a only when you spread it all the way out. Do you what do you envision for a role for him? Is my question. I think it's going to be slot pr predominantly because I think that's where he fits the best, and I think that's where he performs the best. I do want to throw this out there because I think it makes a lot a big difference. The last time he had a legitimate number one wide receiver across from him uh, was, I believe, 2018. He in that season, 111 catches, 1426 yards, uh, and seven touchdowns that season. Yeah. So, so a, that's huge. Yeah, there's a lot of upside. Um, Croc, welcome. Gary, welcome. Glad to see you guys in the chat. Uh, this is a rarity for us. We don't go live on this channel very often. So don't bear with us as, as we do this because this is so unique. We've been waiting so long, and I know the, the fan base is fired up to get something done. But this also has, been, I think, been in the plans for a while. Yep, they had I nearly agree. reached a decision last year. So it, it was at, at the last second that that didn't happen. He goes back to Pittsburgh. Now they're there. Do you think that that year, again, only playing five games, the severity of the injury, the playing with Ben Roethlisberger, do you think that this has helped his, his case, made him a better fit, more hungry, whatever, in coming to Kansas City? Or do you think that this has kind of dulled the impact that he can have? I don't think it dulls the impact that he can have. I think it actually is going to help the impact he can have because now he understands – that I think he really understands signing this contract this year with Kansas City, especially considering I think he basically got $8 million guaranteed to go back to the Steelers last year. He understands that this is basically a situation where he is going to be playing. He is going to be playing with the best quarterback in football. And if he would have been here last year, he could have signed a big deal this offseason. 
Look at what the court, the wide receiver market is bringing to all these different wide receivers that are signing huge contracts. He could have been a guy that got that if he would have been in Kansas City last year. Yeah. And this Kansas is City likely is in the Super Bowl. So Yeah. And, and so this season, it can be a restoration year for him. I, I think that's probably good why they went with a one year. Um, for him, he wants to get to another big contract, a lengthy contract. He's 25. So this really so, lets him. I mean, this is exactly, exactly. what. Right. This is exactly what you want. And he's in a contract year, the same year that so I, Hardman's in a contract year. How fun is that? This, this is like going to Vegas and renting a vet just for the weekend to try it out. And then you're like, oh, I can buy it when I go home if I really like it. You yeah. know, that's that's basically what it is. I think I might have to do that when the draft's finally over someday. Um, I, I'm, I'm encouraged by this because I think for fans, they were pretty frustrated at how Very. little had been done. But you hit it right off the bat as soon as it happened that this signals a couple of things. A, the Patrick roster bonus has been converted at the very least. And it could even be that they're close to an extension with Tyreek. I think paying a free agent wide receiver tells me that they probably have that number either on lock or very close for Tyreek. Yeah, no, I agree. And I think that that's going to be a big question because you saw another free agent wide receiver in DJ Moore get signed to like a four-year $73 million deal. Uh, he's nowhere close to, to the receiver that Tyreek Hill is. Uh, really, I think that his numbers are going to probably go up from what we were expecting them to be because of the Devontae Adams deal. Uh, but this is really going to you know, lay the groundwork for where they could be. I'm not so sure Kansas City is going to be done. If they did restructure Patrick for the full amount, that freed up $22 million in cap space. This is going to take up three. They still have 19 million left, and that's before a Tyreek Hill signing, and that's before an Orlando Brown signing. So they have work that they can do. They could go get a free agent pass rusher. They could go get, you know, anybody in free agency that they really want that's still left. Jarvis Landry is another option out there if you want to go get another wide receiver. Um, that wide receiver room is pretty bare. Right OBJ is still out there too. I'm just saying. Yeah, but he won't be available until almost December. Yeah, I, I get what you're saying, but that's a that's a move. <laughs> He's a September signing to me. I'm just saying. Yeah. No, absolutely. Okay. Um, Doug, thank you for the support. Appreciate you being here. Um, and he wants to know uh, exactly where they can find you again. Is it Chiefs Corner at Substack.com? Uh, it's or Substack. It dot, it's dot. Chiefs... <laughs> Great question. I'll put it in the just chat. Throw it Give up. me just a second. Do that. So thank you for asking, Doug, because I, I have that confused as well. And, and Longmorn, you have a very good point. Um after losing Pringle, yes, you, you definitely had to do this. I think it was in the works before then. Um, happy for Pringle because he gets paid a little bit more than he would have gotten in Kansas City. Uh, happy for Ryan Poles because he, he brings in a wide receiver. He knows his quarterback can trust and that Justin Fields will have someone that will work for him. I think it's a big plus all the way around. Hate to see Byron depart, but this is Byron's time to get paid. At 28 years old, the Chiefs are not going to keep investing in him, so he needed to go elsewhere, and I'm glad to see that it's, it's with Ryan Poles, with Justin Fields, a, I think a quarterback that has a lot of upside left in him if he can get a, a receiver core underneath him. So uh, happy for that. Um, I honestly okay. I honestly still would have loved to have seen Byron Pringle back, especially with Juju. I still think that there's value there. I still think that they have the depth that they could have used at wide receiver, and that's why I don't know that they're done. Just because you yeah. give a wide receiver three million dollars doesn't mean you're done. I think you know if you go look at if you go look at Chiefs Corner on Twitter, I tweeted out pictures of the free agents that were still left. Most of those guys are still out there. Free agent wide receivers, corner, edge, linebacker, all the different positions Kansas City needs. Right tackle, left tackle. I mean, they don't need a left tackle, but could you get a left tackle to flip to right tackle? Swing. <laughs> yep. So. Lots of players still available. I understand the frustration, and I get why people are frustrated they didn't do a lot. Uh, but at this point, there's still a ton of talent out there, and the draft is still coming, which we'll have a mock draft uh, on Monday that we'll have to do a little bit differently. I still think that it, this doesn't take wide receiver off the board at 30. Uh, agreed. I mean, and I don't know that this necessarily knocks McCall Hardman out of the starting lineup. If you don't get an X that you really want, Juju can line up there and you can just run small if you want. It's like it's like three guards on a basketball team. The best um, part and, about and this turn, sorry, I was just gonna say the best part about this for me is it means that if you do get a rookie in the first round, you don't have to start him and he doesn't have to be a big impact guy. Yeah, agree. I think that helps. Um 
Eater, and I see your question, and unfortunately, yes, on Locked On, we we have not been around long enough. We do not have the super chat a capability on this channel. You just have to get back to me on RGR, and, and I'll answer all your questions. But I appreciate it. And, and Joseph, um, I do like Robert Woods as an option. Just going to throw that out there. The injury scares me. Like it would have to be very, very, very light in compensation for me. Well, but it's you know they have plenty of seventh round picks. I can't see them keeping Robert that. Woods. I, I can't see him keeping Robert. Yeah, I just I can't see him keeping Robert Woods with signing Allen Robinson. So if you want to trade him for a seventh rounder, I mean they're they're gonna have to release him at some point. So I would yeah. like that move. Finn, I do think that they can trade up. I definitely agree with you there. Um Oregon Fishing, nice to see you guys over here. A lot of a lot of everybody coming over to this channel. We'll try to do this from time to time when there's breaking news. God knows we'll have enough of it. Um, thank you for checking out. Make sure you're subbed either here on the channel, like sub and hit the bell, um, or over on the audio side. Um, this is Locked On Chiefs. This is part of the Locked On Network where we do every team every day, the draft every day, the NFL every day, every sport you can think of. Make sure you check the rest of those out. I know a lot of you guys know me and you've come over from, from the RGR channel, but there's a lot going on all the time. And Chris kind of, he balances me out when I get a little <laughs> overdrawn on certain things, especially well, the fullback talk. By the way, Mike Burton, cheers to you. I'm yeah. glad you're back, Mike. <laughs> and I will say this. I know we're talking about Juju. Um, I did have something that's very important. If you want to see it, go check out my information on Chiefs Corner about the Austin, about, sorry, uh, Andrew Wiley, his signing, go look it up on Twitter. Uh, very big deal on that. I think that was a brilliant move by Kansas City to get him for what they got him for. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, if anything else breaks over the weekend, you guys will definitely have reaction for you. It takes a little bit more time for us to kind of get together, depending on where we are. Um, as a one-man operation on RG, I'll give you instant reaction. But this, we will try to update you. If not, we have a mock draft on Monday. Don't miss that because we will take this into account and start looking at how else we can build this roster. I see a lot of questions about draft picks. We're going to get into that on Monday, and we'll have a full discussion then. So thanks for being with us. Appreciate you dropping in on what is a weird night, Friday night for a live stream. But, hey, it's, it's all worth it when the Chiefs do something cool. So enjoy this pick. Maybe there'll be something else tomorrow. Thanks for watching us. We'll catch you next time.